It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show with Jay Hall and DJ Academics. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Let's get it. Yep. What's good, what's good, what's good? It's my sub, Jay Hall. This guy right here, DJ Academics. It's what's the- happening? A little under the weather, but I'm here. It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show. Damn, brother. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Babies get you sick, man. <laughs> what can you do? The bundle of joy, the little man? Yeah, but he got sick from the other one, so. How does that work out? Like, when one baby gets sick, do you put him, like, in a, in a sick room? You're supposed to, yeah, quarantine, but, yeah, it didn't work. I mean, does that ever work because everybody's in the same house? Yeah, it works, but just not in this case. Oh, okay. I mean, is he is he better, though? Yeah, he's all right. I mean, he's getting getting better, and I'm starting to get worse. <laughs> he's on the outskirts. So he's on the, looking out, and I'm looking in. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, this is his joy. I mean, luckily you come from somewhere you love, man. No, it doesn't doesn't make it any different. Oh, I can imagine it could come <laughs> if it come from a coworker you can't stand. You got a pass or buyer. I'm still sick. <laughs> uh, I guess real. That's real. And I've been going kind of good. I haven't been sick so far this year, so I'm gonna stay right over here on this side of the mic. All right, <laughs> that's for sure. I um got a chance to check out the hip hop museum. In D.C., if you get a chance, you know, check it out. It was going all the way up until February 18th. Um, started by Jeremy Beaver. Um, I can't remember the name of the studio. He he um, started, I think, Laser Vision or something like that on Georgia Avenue in D.C. Pardon me, I, I can't. And, and Dave Mays, the founder of The Source Magazine. Okay. And um, the museum is kind of dope. It's at the Blind Wino, Southwest DC, man, they got all these artifacts in there. They got like all these um, signatures, um, like these um, plats that are on the wall. They also have one thing that I found interesting was that they had um, what they had uh, it was almost. Oh yeah, that was that was funny, not interesting, but hilarious. Was they got a picture of your boy MC Hammer in spandex? Oh wow! I forgot how hard. I mean, well, I forgot how. <laughs> yeah, the picture of him in spandex, and you forgot how hard. I was saying, I, I forgot how. I pause. Forgot how, just pause I right forgot, there. Yeah, just, yeah, just pause yeah, right yeah, there. For a I forgot how fearless Hammer it was. Yeah. You know what I mean? The brother just didn't care. Pioneering. Yeah, pioneering. You know what I mean? Just full on straight, like you know, white beater spandex, just all in there. You know what I mean? But um, it opened up. With um, Sugar Hill Gang performing, I guess like their fortieth, the fortieth anniversary of their song, Rappers of Light. So okay. it's it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty dope museum. You know, I gotta check that out. I mean, I got a chance to check that out, and it got me more interested in wanting to check out the like the Trap Museum in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. My sister lives out in Atlanta. She tells me it's really good, it's really dope. I don't know if it's still. Excuse me, I don't know if it's still there. I think it might have. Yeah, I got a couple of, a lot of people in Atlanta. I used to live in Atlanta, but I got somebody that I know in Balt- from Baltimore that moved to Atlanta, and they're just like tearing up the Atlanta, sle- Atlanta scene. She just opened up a restaurant called Slutty Vegan. It's um it's called what? Slutty Vegan. She's basically, it's a, it's a, she's been on TV. All the big celebrities have come to her restaurant. She started it from a food truck. Oh. And it was called Slutty Vegan, basically, because there was no place for vegans to go get vegan junk food. So it was like vegan burgers, all types of, okay. like, it's crazy. Vegan it, junk food? Doesn't that defeat the purpose? Isn't no, vegan food, isn't vegan life supposed to be healthier? I mean, from a meat standpoint, but it's still, you still want late night snacks and stuff like that, like burgers and stuff like that. So it was plant-based burgers and stuff like that. And it's actually been crazy. Like, a lot of little babies, one of Outcast has been there. The mayors have been there. She's been on Good Morning Atlanta, it's like a big craze. She's led a whole revolution in, in um, Atlanta in this in the past twelve months, and it's been ridiculous. So, shout out to her, Pinky. Okay, home homie, Pinky. She's doing a thing. Yeah, the slutty vegan. Okay, that's what's up, man. I, I need to um, check that out next time in Atlanta. Slutty vegan. Yeah. I'm not still understanding the slutty part, but yeah. um, and when you eat, in your case, <laughs> when you eat it, she makes you say you've been sluttified. So. Well, all right. Yeah, well, all right. And everybody's been sluttified. That there you go. There you go. There's nothing wrong with being a slut. Yeah, slutty vegan. There's nothing wrong with that. We we shooting out here. We yeah. shooting all we we out here. Yeah. That's what's up. I gotta check that out. Um there's also another oh, there's there's a hip hop museum in Baltimore, actually. Um I followed them on IG. Hip hop um, museum? Yeah, it's called the Mini Hip Hop Museum. It's in Baltimore. Oh shoot. I, I don't know, know exactly where it is. Oh uh, but I, I I'll shoot you the IG and you you can check it out. Maybe you'll know. But it's definitely in Baltimore. I definitely have to check it out, you know. So I'm I'm all about that. You know, I was there to check out. Uh, I ran to a mutual friend of um, you and I. I ran to um, Maroff. 
Oh, okay. Homie Moore off was there. She she was there checking out, man. It's, it's real dope. You get matter of fact, it's not too far. It's right down the street from where we record at. Mm. So you get a chance next time you um do your show, or whatever, you should go down there and check it out, man. So shout out to them. Hip Hop Museum, if you're in the D.C. area up until February 18th. They're not even paying me to say it. I just think it's dope. And what I thought it was really, really dope was a lot of people that was even older than me was in there with their kids and breaking down to their kids about the history because it's important for, you know, for the culture to be passed down and kids don't, you know, take it for granted. Yes, that's very true. You know what I mean? So, because I work around a lot of kids and you'd be surprised how many of them do not know, like, their own culture, like, what's going on. Like, they don't, they, they'll know, like, who's beefing. But they don't know like things that happened in their culture that like that happened before it, where it came from and all of that good stuff. So that kind of gave me hope when I saw parents like, because when I was coming up, you know, parents was telling you not to listen to it. Mm-hmm. So now you got parents, you know, holding their child's hand, explaining to them who De La Soul is. Like that was real cool. Yeah, that's definitely. They need to know the roots and where everything stems from. At least know where the samples are. Yeah, come yeah. From. It's it's gonna be a little difficult to try to explain Suge Knight though. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you got to do it. I mean, so it's going to be a difficult to explain ODB, but I mean. Yeah, you got to yeah, do it. it when he went to the welfare line, even though he was getting paid, you know yeah. what I mean? A lot of good memories, you know? So you got to do it. Yeah, so it was real dope. But, you know, let's get into it, man. It was, it was a lot to get into for the show. Uh, first thing that came across my mind, and I text you about this, too. I wanted to see your response on this was the game had played um, – you know, was playing his album. He had like a listening session. Yeah, I saw and that. And he had the live feed going on and all that good stuff. And his album that's supposed to be coming up called Born to Rap. And there was a verse that went viral about Kim K. And it said, quote, I'm Kobe. I'm a goat nigga. I held Kim Kardashian by the throat nigga. Made her swallow my kids until she choked nigga. Should I, I should I should apologize because Jay, my folk nigga. Like, sheesh. Yeah, that was. Yeesh. He, he, he. That was a reaching for headlines line. That's just disrespectful. It's so, so disrespectful. It is disrespectful. So, so disrespectful. It is. And it's like. Oh, man, it's so disrespectful. The thing about, the, the thing about Gabe is like, you always think like he's going to get to an age where he's past this kind of level of life, but he's not. I, I'm trying to understand. Ooh, that where, hurts. Waking up, waking up Tuesday morning hearing that. Ooh, that hurts. What's I mean, you and if you Kanye, you already ranting about everything else. Like, do you rant about game? Do you go off about this situation? Um, I'm sure they don't even live that far from each other. I think so. I don't believe so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they all gonna they all gonna see each other. Yeah, but that's ooh, that's that's bad. I'm just trying to understand but the Kanye purpose of that. to wake up and hear that verse. Oh my god, game's like forty, yo. He doesn't care. Game ain't no forty. <laughs> game he probably like 30, 35. 32, 33. Bro, he's not no 32, man. Let me look this up right now. 50's Why? in his 40s. No, let me look this up right now, bro. 50's game, like 44 or 45. Let, dog, let me look this up right now, bro. Game is not no 32, son. Yeah, game, game was born in 79. He's 39 years old, dog. He's about 40, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Still out here talking about who he smashed and like he's oh, 16. Well, he still got his hairline. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, that's true. It's more than what I can say. I'm just trying to see, like, how does that get? I mean, I, I, I just think, like, at this point, his it's you a know, shock factor. It's a shock value. But where does that get you, though? Don't you think that at this point, game is supposed to be like an OG? It's supposed to be like kind of evolved and schooling. It's like he still he is. And but, shout out to him. He actually squashed the beef. Well, if there, I don't even believe that was a beef. But him and Meek Mill have spoken. They're on speaking terms. They're on good terms now. I wouldn't call that a beef, really, though. In my eyes, I don't think they was beefing. Game is one of those people, man. If you want game to grow up, you might as well go t- choose another rapper because it ain't happening well. <laughs> Tell you right now, if you if you looking for game to be like to evolve like the way Snoop Dogg did and Hove did, it ain't gonna happen. But if you someone who like that, you know how people like the old gangsters. Uh-huh. Uh, you the know they, they the old gangsters. You're right, right, right. Like that's what Forever. you go for. That's uh-huh. because game is just like I mean I, I don't see the purpose, but evidently he does. You know what I mean? I mean I guess he definitely got people attention off that. Yeah, that was the that was the whole plot. He, and he did. Mission accomplished. Most definitely but mission if accomplished. You're Kanye waking up hearing that, oh, that hurts. That hurts. But do you ask my question though? Do if you Kanye, do you go off on him? Do you rant? Do you make a diss song? Do you fight him? Like, what do you do? I mean, you gotta do something. I mean, you gotta defend your wife and your honor and your family. I mean, he kinda I mean, he I mean, Kanye kinda knew stuff like this was gonna come when he decided to marry Kim Kardashian, period, because of her her history in the game. But I mean Hey, in the game. Yeah, I mean, if that's, you, game, if that's the right way to say it. Um, yeah, 
yeah, funny, funny words, but um, <laughs> no pun intended. But yeah, he he knew that this stuff was going to be in play, but. Uh, it just still hurts when it actually comes out. I think out. that right there is kind of old. Saying you smash Kim is not saying anything. Ooh, like, that's that's, that's kind of like a shot right there. No, I'm like, just saying, saying smash like, Kim. That's not saying anything. We no, all smash Kim. No, like, that's, no. That's, 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 I'm that's saying how like, it sounds kinda, when you say it, though. No, I'm saying that's kind of. <laughs> that's how it sounds when you just say it. What you just, when you just, play back I'm what saying, you just said. That's what it sounds like. Rappers saying that, like, that. Where, where does that get you? Like, all rappers are trying to get a Kardashian. I mean, he claimed he had three. I'm saying he, like, claimed he had three Kardashians. Yeah, that's what he claimed. He did say that. Yeah, oh, and like in one of the verses on there, he claimed he had three Kardashians. So my thing is like, where does that get old? Saying you had a Kardashian. Well, in? it's actually only three Kardashian females. No. Oh yeah, because you got the Jenners. The, yeah, other, one, the other ones are Jenners. So the I guess you smash the order, unless you smash the mom. Yeah, unless you smash the mom. Which I'm not mad at you if you did. Yeah. But where did? He's like, definitely a cougar. Why? Why is it that they have to be like? Shits. <laughs> I mean, she got young black guys a bodyguard. That's what I said. She's definitely with the shits. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I, you know, if she banging with ten buck two brothers, and you know what I mean, I don't see why she would mess with game. But, but how good could it be if your last husband went to, to a woman on you? I mean, it probably was so good. He was like, I got to turn into this. Oh, it was so good. I got to get me one. <laughs> I got to get me one of my own. I got to get me one of these. I guess that, that, that's one way to look at it. That's, you know what I'm saying? Woo. That's glass half full. I mean, I, <laughs> I guess I guess, half fifty, and I guess she was like, "Better you," because I'm yeah. not about to get no penis. So you know what I'm saying, I just right. go get this black one over here. Sheesh, but I, I so just say, like, to go get me one of these. When did their Kardashians become like this staple of achievement? Like, if you hit them, challenge for that one. It's like <laughs> that's a ten. That's a ten month challenge where that transformation happened. Yeah, but I'm saying, when did the Kardashians become this staple of like, oh, so when you hit them, you achieve something? Like, where where did that happen? Where did that happen? Or like, why does that have to be? Like, why are rappers holding the Kardashians? Because they're just famous. That's all. Because they're famous. Because everybody knows them. Everybody knows them. It's just a title. You hit something that everybody else sees and everybody else wants. Yeah, you use it as a as a little trophy. So to speak. I ain't going to trip too hard because, I mean, what, hip-hop is what, in its early 40s and for the first 35 years, it was just in black women, so now it's just in white women. I ain't going to go too hard for it, but I just don't see the point. Kardashians but, aren't black or white. There's something. No, yeah, what, oh, what is they're it? They're mixed with, man, come on, man. Just because you got a little spot, you Romanian white white. or something, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I'm not going that hard yeah. for it. But it, it's still. They could have walked past the KKK and still lived. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I just don't see the point, but evidently Game does. But like you said, it's always for shock value. And Game never ceased to amaze me when you think that he's over something. Mission accomplished. Yeah, he definitely got us talking about it. Uh, speaking of Ye, still hurts. Uh, you know, Ye filed a lawsuit against um, for his music publishing and masters against Rockefeller and Island Def Jam and EMI Publishing. Um, you know, he ranted about that not too long ago also. So you think this furthers the rift between him and Hov? I don't think it furthers the riff. I mean, it's that's just business. And I believe Hoes knows the difference between business and personal beef. But I mean, it's kind of funny though, because I don't know, Hove is more of a he's more of the empowering part as far as the artist with the rock, whole rock nation push and just teaching the artists to be more empowered and owning things and stuff like that. So it's kinda of, I don't know. It's kind of funny. Yeah, and I'm and I'm not really he doesn't sure. own any of his music. Well, and ever since Hove kind of left you know, Def Jam altogether. I'm not sure how does that go. Yeah, but like, it could be more of a Def Jam situation. It could be that, but that because I mean, but you have to attach Rockefeller to it because it was a joint venture. So it might right. not be that Hove is holding it back. It's just Hove's the name that everybody's thinking about. That's real. So it could really be Def Jam and EMI, but you just have to attach all three because they were a joint venture. Yeah, so. and, I, and, I, and you know. Hove has been on record of saying about artist rights. I mean, that was the whole point of starting yeah, so title. Yeah, it doesn't make sense for, for him, for him to, to be upset about that, right? Yeah, so I think it's more of a attack at, or it's more suing Def Jam and EMI. It's just that you can't sue two out of the three when all three are in bed together. <laughs> so it's just in like, bed. <laughs> uh, well, somebody's in bed with him, so yeah. Yeah, so I mean. Well, maybe he should sue Game. Yeah, because when when Def Jam wanted Jay, wanted Jay, they had to take the whole Rockefeller, so that kind of started the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, there you go, yeah, there you go. I guess you ain't, yeah, you know, you ain't tripping off that. I mean, speaking of that, you know, he still is cool with Dame and all that. And I'm pretty sure nobody is going to be mad at you for one of your masters. Nobody's going to be mad at you for one of your publishing, except for the corporate big heads in the first place. Yeah, so that's what they eating off that, of. That's what they kids eating off of. Right. So I highly doubt you know one artist turn around and do it to another artist, but. 
Can't say it never happened before. Yeah, definitely can't say it never happened before. Yeah, can't say it's never happened before at all. Can't say it never it won't happen again. Right. Um, you know, moving on. You check, um, some new music had um dropped. If you got a chance, check it out. Um, Don Q had adopted a diss track towards Tory Lanez called "I'm Not Joiner." Yeah, I saw the art. Where you see he, the artwork where he's yeah, hanging um hanging him. Yeah, he is because Tory Lanez was going on a rant saying he was the greatest rapper alive and all that other stuff and. Don Q's kind of going hard. You talking about Tory Lanez's hairline? Because, you know, Tory Lanez got his hairline restored, but he didn't get the back piece. Like, he still got the bald head, but he got the hairline. Uh, yeah, you know, I guess he ran out of money um, towards that part. Because it is expensive. So maybe he yeah, had the first according 15. According to Safari, it's 10 stacks. So maybe he had five, and he meant to, you know, keep wearing the hat until he get the other. But, you well, know. I mean, it was 10 for the hairline, not, not, not the. Not the, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I guess 10 for the hairline, but not 10 for the back. Yeah, yeah. maybe it's a different price. But, Would you, you know, do it? No, I'm good, man. I've been good. I've been riding clean for a minute. I'm already gonna subscribe to Mach 3's um Gillette shaving. You don't just um, want, lifetime you supply. Don't want, you don't want to get get it restored? Just like I'm back. Um, uh, don't depends on how much stupid money I get. If I get that kind of stupid money where I'm not It'd listening be the to best y'all, ten stacks ever spent, probably. If I if I get that stacks like Hove, I might do some crazy stuff. Yeah, you know good. what I'm saying? Or you can do the Dion. I was I wonder how how big is the Dion? Because the Safari was ten stacks. And that he just got the, the hairline. hairline. Yeah, Dion, Dion got had the whole a, had me. Yeah, Dion, Dion got the whole joint. And then went back to Neon. Dion hair looked better now than it did back when he was <laughs> in Florida playing yeah. college. <laughs> yeah, now he letting it grow. He even going hard now. He letting it grow. He letting yeah. the, he letting the afro grow. Well, that's what happens because usually what happens with a lot of dudes is right the time they about to get their um a lot of times when they start saying you know I'm gonna let my hair grow. That's when you start realizing that your hair is going. <laughs> <laughs> so you probably always did want to let your hair grow because I remember when I was like. Cutting my hair and cutting my hair. And I was like, you know, because I'm one of those people, I was going bald, like, I was cutting my joint, like, every day. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? With the, with the little clippers. And then one day I was being a little lazy. Like, I went, like, three days. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, wait, it ain't growing back as fast. Oh. And I'm a problem solver. So I was like, let me get rid of this. But that's usually what happens is that when you start, like, slacking or you going lazy or you start saying, you know, I want to grow my hair out. You start looking at them little, them little ints, them little corners, and them corners ain't popping like they used to pop. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the first sign, buddy. So I guess Dion, that's where he left off at back in 01. He was like, you know what? I'm just going to get the whole thing. I don't know. If I get stupid money like millions and I ain't got nothing else to do with my money, I mean, Throw who that cares? 10 stacks in the, in the trash. You get, go, go, get because you know why, back. man? Because after a certain amount of years, like if Dion was to have a kid right now, that kid would know. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. And it, Or when your child, for example, your child about to be one, right? Or already one? Uh-huh. Man, by the time he ain't going to see Dion on TV, he not going to know. You know what I'm saying? Like, he not going to know. So, you know. I mean, it's no different from when I was growing up as a kid. My mother was pointing to people on TV saying, he, he wearing a toupee. He been with ball. I didn't know. Uh-huh. The dude from Star Trek had a toupee on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know, but my mother knew it. But who cares? So, you know, I don't know. But Don Q is nothing to mess with. I mean, that's a Bronx, lyrical, dope street dude. And he already telling you he ain't joining her. In the song, he was talking about, like, I ain't no college dude, nothing like that. And he's even daring to t- um, Tory Lanez to get at him anyway with a rap song or come outside or pull up, whatever. You think Tory should come up to that challenge? Tory, Tory got hands. Hands where? Like he was apparently he was fighting in the clubs. He was doing something. Yeah, he, yeah. He got a little miniature hands. Little miniature hands. Yeah, That's he, got, he got little, little miniature, miniature hands. hands. Oh, I don't, you know, Tory Lane's like one of those guys, man. I never really could um, quite grasp because I think he's a good artist, mm-hmm. but he has a chip on his shoulder that is. I mean, I don't know if he felt a certain type of way because he came out at the Drake and he's from Toronto. And maybe we as we as an audience have not allowed more people from Toronto to breathe because when Drake was such a big artist, we just look at he Drake just suffocated it, right? And he so was, maybe because to suffocate and, it. and maybe because he came out rapping and singing, everybody just kept comparing him to Drake, and that's what it was. But you know, you going on your Twitter rants like when he almost got into it with Royce the Five Nine, now you get into it with Don Q. You know, I don't know, man. I mean, come back with the song though. I mean, it could be could be good for the culture. Come okay. back with the song. Could be bad for him. And yeah, if you want to take it any other way, yeah, most definitely could be bad. Um, J. Cole had dropped Middle Child. Did yes, you get a chance to yes, check that he, out? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And allegedly, I guess, he has an album that's in the works. I technically don't believe it because um, he just had an album last year. And artists like Cole and Kendrick don't do the whole every single year thing. Not even Drake. They do like an every other year. But if he was to drop, I would think he'd probably drop like maybe like November or something like that. Nah, I think it's coming. Cause he's been doing a lot of work with a lot of artists, doing a lot of features. He did the feature with Twenty One Savage. Did a feature with Money Bag Yo. He's jumping out of the box, doing a lot of different things. He he's prepping. Something's coming. 
something's coming in the next, I say, 60 days. But that that tends to be the formula with those type of artists is that they'll do an album one year, then the next year they're doing a bunch of features to keep themselves alive, then they'll do an album again. So, you know, maybe it was. Did uh, you, you get a check, check Cole's out? Cole's coming in the spring. Did you check out Middle Child? Though? You like it? Yeah, I love the record. Yeah. Records, records are a powerful record. Strong it is. record. It is. It is. He's proclaiming he's the greatest. Like he, he had to say what he had to say. He, he ain't definitely being got it no off more. his chest. No, he ain't being humble no more. He, he, he ain't going out for you suckers. He ain't going back and forth with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because he's claiming he's the best. And you know what? It might get to a point where we have to start mentioning Cole up there like that. Yeah. I mean, Cole's never been the hottest artist in the game, man. But look at the blueprint. Look at the blueprint he's following. Hence. But define the when you say that he's never been the hottest. What you mean? Like define that. He's never for a the second. biggest artist in the game. Just as like Jay Z was never the biggest artist in the game, but he was always one of the top ones. And being one of the top ones, Hope was never year, the biggest artist in the game. What do you mean? No, he was never the who biggest. Was, who was who was he behind? Like when you say like biggest artist in the I game, I mean like the hottest. I wouldn't say the biggest. I say the hottest. He was never the hottest in the game. Well, you, you had Hard Not Life. He wasn't the hottest rapper at that point. No, Nelly. Um, no, that came out a no, couple years later. Then we had 50. Nelly came out in 2000. Hard Night Life is 98. So I'm saying... All right, DMX was the biggest rapper in the game at that point. Okay, okay. All right, okay. He, it was the hottest record. Hottest X was the rock stars, hands yes, down. Hands X down. was the rock star, then it was Nelly, Bye. then it, then it okay. was 50, and then it was Wayne. Okay. And then you have um, then you had Kendrick, and you have... You, um, who, who, who was after Wayne? I mean, you had... Uh, yeah, but I mean, that's, I mean, I, when you say not the hottest, I mean, I guess I'm looking at it like, I mean, there was a time where Hov was like, Hov in his prime. Hov he, was he's a big artist. Been, though. He's always been one of the hottest artists, but he's never been the rock star of that time period. I don't know, bro. I don't know if I can go with that one, but I mean, I, <laughs> He'll I hear tell you, you that trying. himself. I don't know. I don't he's, know. He's, he's on record saying that himself. No, I know he's on record saying X was a better performer, as when they was on stage and they were doing a hard night life. He's an X used to kill him in performance, and clearly you can see that. But I mean, I, I guess I hear what you're saying. When you when you when you can making that kind of comparison, he's always been there. Yeah, he's Make, always but, there, but he's there every single year, year after year. Whereas though the person that is the hottest, he's hot that year, but then he's gone the next year. Well, I feel like today's cycle always goes Kendrick, Cole, Drake. Kendrick, Cole, Drake, and whenever one of them drop, hence why they never really drop at the same Before time. Before Wale was in that conversation too. What, when was Wale in our? In Wale our top? was in that conversation. Wale, at first. Well, he, he was in that conversation Wale's, early on. He Wale, was in that conversation. Well, yes, here's he the thing: was. you need to tell Wale that because Wale is always so upset that he's never in that conversation. That's he was that's, in that conversation. Well, how, how come he doesn't ever feel like he's in that conversation? I don't know, but he <laughs> was in that conversation. It I don't was, know. Wale the leaders of the new school. The leaders of the new school lyrically was was Drake, Kendrick, Cole, and Wale. I don't. I don't know about. Wale coming after those three. I never heard. I never heard a conversation. Somebody say Cole, even, Kendrick, Drake, well, in the, and then in the, Wale. In the control verse, Kendrick even put him in there. He said, "Well, oh, Kendrick the, put a lot of people in that." Verse. Well, no, he only put three people. He only said three names. No, he said he Mac. said Wale. No, oh, he, maybe we only pay attention to the three. Yeah, you. Yeah, was, he um, said a lot the, of names. The main three was was um Cole, <laughs> Wale, he and Drake. He said a lot of names. <laughs> no, Kendrick went off on a lot of names. Went off with Sean, <laughs> who record it was. Yeah, but the, the main three was was um. Wale, Cole, and Drake. So I don't know, bro. I mean, I, I hear you, but I do think that one thing I will say is that Cole is at the point where he got the numbers, um, because he definitely goes platinum every time he sells. I, even though this generation, this era, tends not to care about going platinum, Cole definitely does the number. And we ain't talking about just streaming and all this. We talking about Cole actually gets hard copy numbers and goes platinum and stuff like that, and he gets hit records. So you know, hey, if he want to start boasting, saying he's the best, I'm not mad at that. My my point is I'm not upset with that, you know what I mean? Because sometimes holding back, you see what they done for Soldier Boy, some wonders mm -hmm. of him saying he the best and he's not, but yet we're all paying attention to him. So if you actually are the best, you might want to start bragging a little bit. Yeah, what I'm just saying, you can be if you're in the top five for 15 years straight. What when was oh, oh about you talking about Cole, not Soldier Boy, right? No, I'm talking oh. about J, J, J. Cole, definitely. Okay, okay. I I saying, if, you're in the, if you mix up in that top five, bouncing around in that top five for 15 years straight, and everybody else in those top fives in every year, they on it one year and they just disappear. Ain't no Draco, though. They're off of, they're off of the list. That's that's what I'm talking about. That's he, the blueprint he's worried about. He's not worried about being the hottest at the time. He's worried about making music and staying consistent at his craft, so he's always respected. He ain't no and Draco. He ain't no Draco, yeah. though. It's like, it's like you may beat me on the Forbes this year, but I'm on there every year. He ain't no soldier you boy. Just on there this year. Draco though. Yeah, he no, no, he definitely ain't. He, he definitely, ain't no soldier boy. No, though. he's definitely not a he soldier boy. He probably copied the style. He doesn't want to be a soldier boy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he has no aspirations Cole to be. A soldier probably boy. got his style a little bit from Soldier Boy. 
Absolutely not. <laughs> Cole! Cole! You probably got his style a little bit from Soldier Boy. Tell him. On the low, though, Soulja Boy may be a better producer than Cole, but that's uh, that's still arguable. That's arguable, but that's uh, the only thing we can argue between those two. Uh, hey, what I will say, if Cole is Because people gonna... forget that J. Cole produces the majority of his music. He just got out of that pocket. No, all of his music. The yeah. last two albums, he was doing all of it. Yeah. Because the only criticism I have with Cole is I kind of want him to work with other producers to kind of bring other angles up out of him because I feel like he's kind of in his basement too much on his own. Mm. And I don't want him to fall into the trap like Eminem did. Like Eminem, when he was at his peak, you know, who somebody else who was hot, you know, when he had his... Eminem wasn't a, produ- wasn't a producer. No, then. no, no. He was producing his own records. You need to go back and check that out. Eminem, them last two albums, Eminem was producing his own records, and all his records are sounding the same. Well, those, those were the horrible albums that we didn't That's pay attention to. That's my point, is I don't want Cole to get on the point where he's good, and then we... You know how right now Eminem's selling, but we don't... The culture really don't pay attention. And even though on record, he... Like, right now, in 2018, he sold more than everybody in 2018. But nobody's really paying attention to him, and we're not putting him in that argument as far as like being hot or even looking at him like that. And I'm saying I don't want Cole to fall into that because creative, cr- creatively, when you're in that dungeon and you only seeing yourself and you producing yourself and you only agreeing with yourself and you ain't got another producer ear to tell you, you know, rap like this, like the way you know Dre is, like a real producer. Sometimes you can fall short, and I would like to hear Cole on somebody else's records and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Just to see him switch up the flow sometimes. Yeah, That's off, all. Off topic, I mean, Wayne's doing a lot of production right now, too. For who Wayne produced for? Dude, Lil Wayne produced Yes Indeed, the Drake and he Lil did? Baby. Yes. I didn't know. No, I swear I didn't know that. Yeah, he put, he's produced a lot of records on the low right now. He's Wayne, Wayne is actually popping as a producer. More I than had a rapper, no idea. To be honest right now. You know, I never pictured Wayne. I mean, Wayne should. He grew up. I mean, he's been in the game since he was three. Yes. Yeah, so. I mean, so he should know everything in the studio. Yes. Yeah, you know so what I mean? He Wayne's definitely doing a lot that, of that's, that should not be a surprise to nobody. I just ain't honest, I just ain't know. Yeah, it's ain't. his producer, his producer name is Louisiana, so. Yeah. Is that talking about that drop? Yeah. That's Weezy for I thought that dude just stole it. Yeah, every time you hear that drop, that's a, a little Wayne. Come Weezy out here? Louisiana. That's Weezy for real? Yeah, every time you hear that drop, that's Lil Wayne producer record. Don't make us sound stupid, man. You you dead serious? Oh, my God. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I thought that dude just saying it. I didn't know that. All right. Well, you know, I ain't going to argue because I, I don't know. So, you know, you DJ. I don't, you know, I don't know. So, yeah, you know, I ain't going to tell no lie. Yeah, shout out to Weezy. Yeah, shout out to Weezy, man. He getting his producer game on. You know what I mean? Shout out to Weezy. Shout out to Tory Lanez and his hairline. Um, Shout out to Don Q. You know what I mean? Was, any new music else that dropped that you could think of? that not matter. Week? None of it matter, right? <laughs> None of it matter. Cold, you, cold drop. That's all that matter. Yeah. You still, did you ever get a chance to check out the future? Because I know when we talked about it last week, neither one of us listened to it yet. I mean, I'd listen to it. I just didn't like listen, listen to it. But I, I, I you like it? To, you feel it? You li- the records, I, the records I've listened to and I played. I mean, I, they're good. I like the crush. Diamonds crushed up. On the start, I can do it. Diamonds crushed up. <laughs> okay. You sound like them. Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the future formula. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. You know, I've been really wanting to get into this all day, man. Um, all week actually. So, the Fire Festival released two documentaries. There were two documentaries based upon the Fire Festival. The failed, the greatest party that never happened. The failed attempt back in 2017, back in April 2017. There was two documentaries. There were one. There's one on Hulu, and there's one on Netflix. And I saw the one on Netflix. Apparently, the one on Hulu actually has the guy. Billy um, Fairland, they actually interviewed him, I guess, from jail or whatever the case may be. But do you remember the festival at all when it first popped off? I remember hearing about it. Do you remember hearing about it? And then I remember 50 um, going in on it. (laughs) So I knew a couple people who they had reached out to when it was popping. And somebody I know who was like a salesperson, they were dealing with them for a second when the festival was first about to happen. Mm-hmm. And that person was like, uh, they they pulled out of it, right? And their boss was mad at them for pulling out of it because the perception was this was about to be the biggest party like of the century, about to be in the modern day Woodstock. Mm-hmm. And he says even now, he looks at that boss like, yeah, didn't I save you? Because it was so much money that was missed out on um, in, the, in the fire festival. People had spent... Um, the tickets range from five thousand to twenty five hundred per ticket. Okay, they had performances like that was supposed to be there was like Blink One Eighty Two, um, Designer, Pusha T, and Tiger, Tiger, and Tiger. Um, but when the people got to this island, <laughs> the island that they kept promoting as being one of Pablo Escobar's islands, 
they had tents and little hot dog sandwiches for people. Then on the top of that, it rained when the people got there. Mm. It continued to rain. And one of the co-founders of this festival was Ja Rule. Ja Rule and a gentleman named um, Billy McFarlane. McFarlane, that's his name, Billy McFarlane. Who got off like a fat rat. Um, well, no, he's in jail right now. He's in jail. He's been sentenced to six years. I mean, until the people came, came and got him. Right. <laughs> he's in jail for six years. But when you watch this doc, the thing that's so crazy about it is such, I'm just going to go ahead and say it plainly, man, it is such a display of white privilege. Because I haven't seen it, by the way. Dude, let me tell you, they talk about how they even set it up, you know, and the biggest party that they had was the was the party beforehand of just promoting it. Mm-hmm. Because they went and got all these models. Mm-hmm. And it it, sh- it tell you where the times we are in right now, because they went and got all these models. None of the models was really doing anything. They were just looking beautiful on the island in the boat. And, you know, they pay models and different um all of them to kind of like hashtag fire festival and all that good stuff. And, you know, just put on the perception like this is the place that you needed to be. And it tapped a lot into a, a title that I was unfamiliar with. Are you familiar with the, with the term FOMO culture? FOMO culture. Yeah, F-O-M-O culture. Phone culture, I guess. F-O-M-O culture, FOMO culture. And that is... I can understand what it means. It means fear of missing out. Oh, no, Fear. I was absolutely wrong anyway. You definitely was out. Yeah, don't even go there. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not. it wasn't nothing like that. It was okay. just, I was just going to say we're so in touch with our phones that whatever we see on social media through our phones, that's what we want. I mean, but listen, damn near. I mean, fear of missing out culture, right? And so they had all these influences there. They had all these people there that they had paid to be there and all that good stuff. And they were saying that they were having problems from the jump. Like, they didn't have enough water. You know, they didn't have enough... Um, they didn't have enough food supply. Like, they were on pins and needles just to make the presentation. They kept telling dude to pull out of the situation, but he wasn't going to pull out the situation. They even got to a point where they didn't have uh, enough gallons of water, and one of the guys, the guy Billy Farland, who was the co-founder, told one of his mans that he's going to have to take one for the team and go give head. I did head, see a snippet of that. Right, I saw go somebody talking about that. to the other dude. to get, And the dude was like, to I'm his gay between. He said, I took a, he took, he said, I took yeah, a I shower. Feel, you're a fearless gay, gay leader or something Yo, like that. Yo, he said, I went to take a shower, and I went to go take one for the team. That means he went to take a shower. You know what that means? That means not only was he going to give you head, he was ready for anything else you was ready to prepare. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that is the dude that can get the shut down. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, that is the dude you need to call. Um, get it done. Right, to get it done. Like, you talk about a, a true champion. I don't want to hear about nobody saying ride or die if you ain't that white man right there. Because that white man is going hard. He was about to get the Aquafina he was about to get. He was about to go for the gusto. For some Aquafina. He took a shower. For some, what would for you some... do for a Klondike bar, right. brother? Right. What would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> <laughs> my God. Oh, my Lord. I don't even want to know. What, what does he do for raises? Uh, what does he do to get sugar in the cereal? <laughs> when the waitress asked him, does he, was he, does he want cream in the coffee? Like, what does he do? Uh, man. But he said the guy was like, look, man, you're good. You know what I mean? Like, just make sure you pay me the money back. Mm-hmm. And there was also a lady there who was a restaurant owner. And so just to skip past everything, the festival totally bombed. And so you still had people on this island who were hungry. They didn't have anything. Mm-hmm. So a lady, man, she, she was feeding people. She was feeding people with, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, out her savings. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, feeding people. Like, the whole situation was just so bad, man. But the thing that also look horrible is when you watch clips of Ja Rule, he looks like a bozo. Ja looks bad. Ja looks like he don't know what's going on. Even in the beginning, when they first was promoting their company. And he was like, yeah, oh, me and Billy... Got a company. Billy, tell us what we got going on, yo. Like, Ja looks like he has no idea what is going on. He's just a face. And he is just there. Yo, he tried to get these girls to jump in the water. He's like, we going to need y'all to get in the water, you know, for the excitement of it. Because they were documenting the whole thing. And Models was like, I'm not getting in the water. Like, you could tell, like, Ja Rule's face was looking like, man, yo. He really wish it was like 2001 when he was on top because I'm pretty sure Jaru 01, if he told the model to jump in the water, they had jumped in the water. Mm-hmm. But Jaru 2017 told the model to jump in the water. They're like, I'm not Who jumping in the water. Oh, yeah. I'm not jumping in the water. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not jumping in the water. Last time you were relevant, I was in elementary school. Right. So <laughs> I felt bad looking at that though, man. But Ja was looking like a bozo, man. I, I'm not even going to front. Ja was looking really, 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 really bad to the point where they showed this one meeting they were having when it collapsed, uh-huh. and Ja was on the phone with everyone. He was like, come on, people. There's a lot of smart people in the room. We're a family. You know, let's think of something. And they were showing the lady talking on the side, and she was like, 
Jai's telling us that we're family. We're not family. I never spoke to this guy. Like, dog, like it was so bad, man. And, you know, he claimed that he was, you know, he wasn't scamming nobody. He Ja claimed that, you know, uh, matter of fact, he had tweeted. He said, um, um, he said, quote, I had amazing vision to create a festival like no other. I would never scam or fraud anyone. What sense does that make? So, you know, he also claimed that he was bamboozled, led astray, all that good stuff. Hoodwick. Hood, yeah, hoodwick, you know. So, and the guy, Billy McFarlane, he's been sentenced to six years. Mm. So, I, I guess it says a lot about this whole perception game, man, about this whole, like, not missing. Like, everybody was investing in something that they thought was going to happen because they were afraid to not be in the moment of it. I mean, people paid their life savings to be a part of a party that did not happen. Like, can you imagine that? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you imagine wanting to be in so bad. Like, I, I don't have that kind of desire, so I don't know what that is. But I think it does speak on a smaller scale of, like, like you said earlier, um, that you probably can touch on, like, uh, how we all those ways addicted to our phones because we have to be plugged in. Like, we don't want to put our phones off. You know what I mean? We don't want to disconnect because we have to be plugged in. This need to always want to be plugged in. But we could be at a party and we want to be we want to be still looking at social media, even though we're at the party. Like, we can't even enjoy our own party. And it got taken to that extreme. I think things like that lead to that extreme, man. I ain't going to lie to you. After that whole documentary, it made me just want to just start disconnecting in life. Like, I started cutting my phone off at night. You know what I mean? Just turning my whole phone off. Mm. You know what I mean? Just talk, like, I, 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 I want to be more in the practice disconnecting because I'm not saying I'm ever going to get to that point because a lot of that was just white privilege. But I don't ever want to be in danger of going on there. So I, I felt like, I felt like man, um, uh, somebody who's using drugs and they like, you know, what, I'm going to stop now. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like I've been smoking weed or I've been popping pills a little bit. But you know what? I'm not addicted right now. But you know what? If I keep going, it's a possibility. I will be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this pill down. I'm not going to crush this up tonight. You know what I mean? So. That's kind of like how I felt like after I watched that doc. But I can't imagine being on the island and you lost all your savings mm. for a party that you didn't go, that that never happened. Like, what do you say to that? But shout out to the lady, the restaurant owner, because they did a GoFundMe and apparently raised 50000 for her. Oh, sheesh. So, I mean, look, shout out to her, man. And I mean, there are people who are still emotionally wrecked from that whole event. You know what I mean? They're emotionally wrecked from that event, so... Shout out, you know, shout out to her, man. But that whole fire festival, when you watch it, though, you are going to laugh, though. I'm not going to lie. You're going to laugh at the dumb white people who went over there. Just be honest with you. You're going to laugh at the dumb white people who went over there and got stuck. You're going to laugh at Ja Rule. You know what I mean? You're going to tilt your head a little bit at this guy named Billy McFarlane who never had no money to begin with. You're going you're gonna to laugh at that. So there's a lot of things you're going to laugh at. So I encourage you to watch um one of them. I, I didn't watch the Hulu one with them, but now I am curious to hear what he had to say. So but what's the difference? The one, the difference is the one with Hulu was the one they actually interviewed him because he was going to charge people. Mm. He was going to charge. And Netflix was like, we ain't going to pay you. We'll just, we'll just get everybody else around it. Just do it without you. <laughs> right. We'll just get everybody else around it. So and he was trying, he's still trying to get money. He out was of still you. trying to get money because apparently he had no, that was the whole thing. The reason why he didn't want to pull out the situation because he has invest, he had investors in it. And so he didn't want to pull out because he was going to have to pay the investors the money. Oh. You see what I'm saying? So he wanted to, he felt like as long as they go down and they pay, he didn't even care about the people's conditions. But when the rain happened and then people, and then the acts, the people who were supposed to perform start pulling out, it was just one situation after another. Then they had to cancel it midway through. Mm. Yeah, man. And you got to remember, this is a new era where during the time people were tweeting like, yo, people who landed early was like, yo, this is all they got for us. Two hot dogs. Like, it was bad, man. So if you somebody who on your way there, you looking online like, wait, I'm not about to go there. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. they had to cancel it, man. So, yeah, it was crazy, man. So, yeah, just want to talk on that real quick, man. Uh, moving on, your guy, uh, YG, shout out to him. He won 20000 from a bet from your man, um, Birdman, hey, um, man. because of the Rams versus Saints game. He announced it on Twitter. First he said Birdman owed me. Then he tweeted later that Birdman actually pay him. But I want to give a shout-out to YG for the fact that, two on record, he's probably the first artist we ever seen get paid from Birdman. Duh. I mean, he got his money quicker than everybody, anybody I know. Mm. You name me somebody who got their money quicker from Birdman. Uh, he bet somebody on the Super Bowl. Well, as a matter of fact, I think he actually won that bet, so never mind. Yeah, you're right. Who? No, no, no. Birdman actually won the bet, so he didn't have to pay. Yeah, well, he, he still... um. 
He still paid him more. He still got paid better than I would say um, expeditiously. Yeah, he still got paid. He still got paid quick. Okay. Yeah, 20, he still 20, got paid. Twenty G's, twenty G's. Even though it was a technicality, he should have lost that bet. But but he got yeah. paid. He, he got, got paid. paid. He got paid. You know what I mean? So he shout out paid. to him, man. He got paid. Um, also, your guy Nelly. I don't know if you got a chance to check this out, but Nelly is filing a lawsuit because his lawyer is making an argument that the woman that accused him for rape, if you remember, Nelly got um, charged for rape. Yep. He denied the allegations, and he wasn't charged. And he was I'm sorry, and the charges were dropped. Um, but Nelly is filing a lawsuit. The lawyer is making an argument that the lady name should not remain anonymous. It, absolutely. Put her name out there. Put her out there. And I think she... I, and with the what we're going to talk about after this, I think... Accusers should be held to the same type of penalty as the person who would have been guilty for that for that charge. I believe you're if you falsely accuse and you just blatantly make that up to just to to just destroy somebody's life, I think your life should be destroyed. It got to go both ways. If if the, if, the, if it finds out that that was intention, I think I think it's hard to prove rape, and I think it's also hard to prove what was the intentions of the falsely accused. Also, too, it'd be hard to prove what was the person trying to accuse her. Yeah. You know what so, I mean? But so that goes for this situation and the Chris Brown situation, which we'll get into. Well, yeah. I was going to say Chris Brown um, got released uh, from Paris. Well, Paris, they were he got released yeah. from... And he's official. filed suit for defamation of character. Right. He was being... He um, allegedly was accused of being of, of raping a, a woman in Paris or in France. And, I mean, same difference. And he was released with no charge. And he was released with no charge. And he's finally been able to come back to the U.S., Mm-hmm. Um, but Chris went a little bit harder than Nelly, though. Not only is he gonna file a lawsuit, but he put out some T-shirts. This bitch um, lying, black. Family. Yeah, yeah. This bitch lying. Yeah. I mean, you got to, you got to, you got to, do, you got to protect yourself. You got to protect, protect your, your 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 brand and who you are and what people think of you. See, the only issue with that is I don't know. The, we don't know the story. Like the we don't story know. The story was that. She followed him to his room. Okay. We talking about ba- Chris Brown, not yeah, Nelly. Chris Brown. Okay, go ahead. Went to a bathroom, and then, therefore, after that, it was taken, basically. It was what? It got taken. What? Well, he took her. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it got taken, and then her, his friends or something came in there, and they got theirs, too. So. And so, apparently, that's her story? That it's... was that was her story. I okay, got gotcha, you. Gotcha. That I heard alleged that I, that she said alleged allegedly happened. Okay, okay. So I just have find it hard to believe that somebody like Chris Brown, a stature who has females just willing to just jump off a cliff to dive on his dick, um, would have to rape her. But you know that's not what rape is about, though, right? Rape is not about desperation. Rape is about power. So you have people who are in power and they take what it is they want. Because who tells them no? Because of what you said, you gonna tell me no? So you do have power for men, powerful men, who in that position where you and I would be like, why would you have to rape somebody? Well, he's but not it's, a. It's not, it's well, not Chris, about Chris that. Chris Brown isn't isn't the powerful man. He's the he. It would be. I would feel as though Chris Brown would be the female in the situation. Well, explain that, brother. Because it's like not the female, as in like. I'm talking about as a female, as in he would be the hunted instead of the hunter, as okay. in the, as in the male is always. Is always the predator, not the prey. I feel as though Chris Brown would be the prey for a woman, and the woman would be the predator because I think I believe the woman would want him more than he would want them. To be honest, I mean that's that's real, but I'm just talking about the definition. I'm just talking about rape is not about desperation, as in somebody raping somebody un- because what, what they saying. can't understood, get. That's understood, all. I'm just throwing that record so understood nobody won't saying. think that we don't know what rape understood, is. Understand what you're saying. Gotcha. But I'm just saying in this instance. Because I don't know. I'm not saying Chris did it. So I'm not, I don't want nobody thinking I'm saying that either. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying Chris did it. And I'm not saying he didn't do it. But I'm saying it's very highly possible that I believe that he didn't do it. And I will, I believe what he's saying in this instant. The the Rihanna situation was the Rihanna situation. That's anger. That's, that's situationship. That's emotions. That's all that bottled up in one moment and it just explodes. Okay. This would be a premeditated thing. Like, I would just, like, I'm... I, I just don't see. It. I just don't see it possible. Well, different layers of it. I mean, there, there's a possibility. Somebody that everything... I don't. I just met. Like, come on now. Somebody I just met. It's not like I'm chasing you. It's a big, long winded thing to it. And you. But, that's, but sometimes that's what rape is. Though. We we got we have to put that on notice. Sometimes that is a rape. Is some people do rape in that moment. But look, I I personally I don't know. I don't because uh, I, I think Chris, that all Chris Brown in my eyes. Chris Brown just say, hey, hey, Chris, hey, no, no, well, he's Chris. Hey, you gonna call hey, him? Hey, hey, Joe. Just hey, Joe. Third hey, go downstairs. Grab another one, tell him come up. <laughs> well, one thing I will say is that... Send her home. 
I mean, yeah, we, we you, you can look at it like that, but you know, we have to be quick. We we can't be so quick to kind of like dismiss it as there's no way he raped this person because of this person's position. That's why a lot of women who do get raped don't want to come out and admit that they got raped because nobody will believe them. Well, I tell you this, for him to be released with no charge in Paris, overseas, says that they've done a, they've done enough research and investigations to see that there was no cause for this. You like to hope so. All. I mean, you like to hope so. Look, I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm surprised that the first charge... of all, he's black in Paris. So if anything happens, he's going down. Well, I'm if gonna they be got honest any with any reason to keep Chris Brown, believe me, they are keeping his ass. Right. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that because of the way Chris Brown be living his life, where he kind of is always in the news for something every exactly. six months. So if they see any re- because of what you exactly just said. If they have any reason, they feel as though they can pin it on him and 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 defame him anymore, they are going to. Right. So apparently they didn't have anything. No, what I'm saying <laughs> is, my, is point. <laughs> my, my saying is, is that if, if you're someone like Chris Brown and you've been in trouble every six months, I'm surprised something like this ain't happened to Chris Brown like five years ago. Because oh, Chris, because okay. every since Chris and the Rihanna situation, Chris has been in and out of the news and getting in trouble with the law for the past nine something years. Uh-huh. So I'm surprised. Well, that what this, did happen? I mean, he had him. They, he had one sneak in his house, and wait for him in his that's bed. That's what I'm saying. So I, I'm surprised Chris <laughs> didn't get this charge already with you know him allegedly hanging around like the wrong crowd, wrong people, and all that other stuff. So I'm surprised it took this long. But hey, listen, man, all women need to be heard. And all people who are accused need to be given the benefit of a doubt. You know what I mean? As far as the evidence we know, I don't know anything that happened in that situation. If Chris didn't do it, I'm glad he's innocent. That's that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we I don't, I don't know too much about the information, but nobody wants to be accused of rape. Nobody wants that because that's not something that you can just roll out of bed with, man. You get accused of rape. Nobody wants that, so. Let's try to move on to something a little lighter, man. I don't know if you caught this on your timeline, but you got two chains was in the studio with Dr. Dre. And I guess Dre is working on it with his forthcoming album, his next next album coming up. Okay, that's care? interesting. Do we care? That's interesting. Do we care? That's interesting. I'm saying, do we care? Yeah, we care. It's two chains. It's Dre. We care. We care? We care. Just want to make sure. Is the we album going to drop? Because it's Dre. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, it's Dre. It's they, Dre. Work, they working this week. Will they be working next week? I yeah. don't know. <laughs> it's Dre. It's Dre. All I'm saying, if you, if you t- listen, if you get the opportunity to work with Dre and you tell my like two chains, don't do half the record and then say let, I'll be a back, I'll be back next month. Or have Dre be like Dre, tell Dre to send you when he's done. No, you better wait in there with Dre. You better take it back in like 90, 90, 1990. Like you better you better be in that studio with Dre. Cause if you leave and that record ain't done, you ain't gonna see that record, bro. Ever. I read an interview years ago. I think it was Cameron. And correct me if I'm wrong, anybody who ever hear this. And he said he did raps with, um, he did some songs with Dre. And I guess we've never heard it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like if you leave Dre, listen, Dre ain't going back to that, man. So 2 James, that might have been a good photo op. But I hope you stay in there with him. Well, make sure you see Dr. Dre hit the word process. And make sure you see him hit the send button to your uh... email. And click and drag. And don't get fooled, homie, because by the time you get on that plane, that, that album going to be in the dust with everyone else. Yeah, it's just going to be in that big old collage of files on that old hard drive. Right, right. Um, did you get a chance, though? I, I, I know we jumped past that because we were talking about YG, but did you get a chance to check out any of the um, NFL games? And I want to ask you, what did you think about that, that, that I guess, that no call in the Saints and Rams game? You well, think because Roger so far, Roger Goodell has not said anything at all. Should they say something in that, or should they just let it go past? Well, I mean, he's trying to stay quiet until it's to the point of no return. Because in the rule book, um, the Saints receiver actually looked up in the rule book where the commissioner does have the power to change a call and the outcome of a game. So he actually pointed that out, and, and um, another guy, um. Ben Watson, who's very respected into in the Players Association, he um talked about how his silence is he needs to be a leader and speak out, but his silence is cowering, so he has to speak out on the situation because it's a blatant call that they, basically if the call is called, basically the Saints are in the Super Bowls, they just run out the clock because it's first and ten to the one, and you just basically taking you can knee it out really, so it's a whole other team in the Super Bowl, and he's talking this isn't just a regular season game this is a life changing game like you go to the super bowl like this is like some players never do and it's just it's 
it just makes a big difference. So I think, so why wasn't explain to me again? They don't do instant replays on on hits or something like that. Like what they was don't the do whole instant situation? replays on penalties? Okay, there's no instant replays on pass interference penalties. It, which was it was two penalties on a play. It was a targeting penalty, which is a blow to the head, helmet to helmet, and it was def- and it was defensive pass interference where he hit him clearly before the ball was there because he didn't have his head turned and he hit him way before the ball was there. So it was an easy cut and dry play, and it's just definitely the worst no call ever in sports. So should should the rules be changed? At least you know one proposal I heard was that. When it comes to games like this and the playoffs, you should allow like a replay. And there's also been arguments about them playing like the last quarter. I mean, should there be rules like that? Do you think there's a chance or are we just gonna move on? Well, technically it is in the rule book that the commissioner can change the outcome of a game. Really? I never yes. knew that. I just I just said where were you the past minute and a half? That was the first thing I said. My brain. Marcus Cole I said Marcus Cole said Mike Thomas, the receiver for the Saints, looked it up in the rule book. He put up the chapter and the letter, uh, chapter this, uh, paragraph this. He put up everything and said where well, the commissioner has the power to overturn a call or change the outcome of a game or the score of a game if he sees fit. Would they lose money in that? Would they lose money? I mean, because he's taken so long, it would lose money now because they've already marketed the, the Rams and put all this stuff and they lose that. But I mean, yeah, they would be behind schedule now. But but you'd be behind schedule even if he made the decision earlier, right? Well, if he made the decision that next day, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been behind schedule. Because when they would have played then, like like today. And do you play a whole game or just? Yeah, hey, uh. you can play the last quarter or play the whole game or call up. He could have called that night and made them replay that. Yeah, made them replay that. What I thought was funny was the dude that actually hit him from the um, um, Rams was like, hell yeah, that was a pick. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hell yeah. I mean, was... it was blatant. It was blatant. Yeah, it was, bro. It was, man. It was that's, 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 that's bad. So do you think this is it for Drew Brees? And another thing they need to do is – because the referees, after the game is over, they just disappear. They need to start, just like the players have to do, like, mandatory interviews after the game. Referees answer some questions. I don't want that, game. bro. Referees would, get, would die. Referees would die, bro. It's a little bit deeper with referees, dog. Referees would die. People are still looking for those refs in that Sacramento-LA um, LA Laker game overtime um, 10, 10, 15 years ago for not making none of those calls, bro. <laughs> People still looking for those refs, man. I don't know if we want that, bro. I think we want it, but we don't really want that. That's that's going to be a problem. Well, can they answer the question? They getting paid a couple hundred thousand Man, yeah. we don't need to sell those people, man. People people die, bro. Because what they not those dudes like you think Marshall Lynch and all them brothers wasn't press ready. You think the you think the NFL referees are press ready? Yes, these are older middle aged men who that don't mean I'm they sure know how to well deal spoken. with those reporters and all this stuff, man. And age of viral. No, I wouldn't touch that, bro. I wouldn't touch that. But you don't think so? I think they need to pull their feet to the fire too. I, I think you, it might you, lead if to you something. Make a, if you're gonna make a 20, 22 year old who misses a kick. And sends his team home for the season. He did go on tour. You gonna you gonna put the camera to his face? Yeah, that's real. That's real. That's why, real. No, why no, can't, no, why that's can't real. you do it to a fifty year old man? That's real. That's real. Did you get a chance to check out the Patriots? The Patriots game was that the same situation? Because I heard there was some no calls there, but that was typical Brady eaters or Patriots. Nah, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. It wasn't a one call at the end of the game that they changed the outcome. They played the Chiefs. Okay. That changed the whole outcome of the game. That one no call changed that whole outcome of that game, period. Like, okay. Period. So it wasn't a typical. The Saints bullet. still had a chance to win it in overtime because they had the ball going in. So, But still, that one no call changed the outcome of that game. Okay. There is no overtime. Game's over. Okay. Okay. That's real. That's real. Well, Brady is going. You know, I, I I was arguing with somebody who wanted to make the argument because you. I don't know if you saw that that the Patriots were trying to say that which was trying to say that they were underdogs. And I was like, I don't know how you could be underdogs when you went to nine Super Bowls in the past almost twenty years. Eighteen years. Eighteen years, man. Like it, you're you're no underdog. The Super Bowl every other year. Yeah. Again, you're no underdog. So, yeah. Um, shout out to Wu Tang. The trailer just dropped of Mike's and Men. It's going to be a four-part doc on Showtime that's going to be um, dropping real soon. And the trailer dropped, and it looks really, really good. You can go to hiphopmatureshow.com and check it out if you want to get a chance. It looks really, 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 really good. You know, Wu-Tang, 
you could pretty much consider them the greatest hip hop group of all time as a group. I, I think as a group, they're probably the best of all time. You? As a group, they're probably the biggest of all time, the biggest group. Oh, they're definitely the largest on there. There's no, there's no, there's no, no. I, I always felt NWA was the, I always felt like NWA was the Guns N' Roses of hip hop, but, and it, they always had the biggest influence because they didn't stay together long. Mm -hmm. But nobody's family tree, in a weird way, to me, is bigger than NWA's. Even though Wu Tang had more members, but when you look at the family tree of NWA, I mean, it defined a genre. But as a group, when you think about it as a group, not because to me, not a duo. I, I think when you're more, I hate when people call Outkast like a group, or people like EPMD a group. I think when you're a, a duo, you're a duo. Anything that's more than two, you're a group. And Wu Tang as a group is probably the best group in hip hop we've ever seen. But like you said, that's definitely. The largest, because we've seen hip hop clicks, but as a group, you're never gonna see that again, you know. So shout out to them. I'm definitely gonna be glued in and watch that four part doc, and I'm glad to be living to an age where I'm starting to see documentaries on my hip hop superheroes. I'm glad to be living to the age to you know be able to see that. But you does that I mean? tell you you're getting old because you're getting documentaries now? Yeah, man. But I'm happy for it though. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I mean, personally, I'm, I'm happy. You know, to get to the age where I, because there are a lot of things that, especially you take somebody like Wu Tang when they were, I, I was a kid. So there might, there might be a lot of things where I think I know the story, but I don't know the story. Stuff that went over your head. Stuff that went over my head. You know, um, stuff that I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Because to be honest with you, man, I wasn't, I, I was listening to Wu Tang, man. My, my sister would listen to him. I didn't know what Wu Tang was talking about, man. Some of that, yo, I remember hearing them saying, yo, God, I thought they were really talking to God. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I thought it was like I didn't know about the 5% nation and all that because I, I ain't come from that. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't know about none of that. So, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I'm getting older. It's cool for me to see that because I want to see the workings of it. You know what I mean? I was a kid when these albums came out, but to see the history and the background of it is, is more about learning about the culture. So I'm all for that and to see the influence. I'm definitely for that. Um, Big shout-outs to DMX. He's out of jail. He's home. Yeah, all man. He's home. Yeah, he was at. Um, he looked old too. He was at the Gilmore <laughs> Federal Excellent. Correctional. Ex you ever seen somebody where like they just all of a sudden they just get old? Like, oh, first foul. Like, nah, X kind of been looking like that for a minute, bro. Well, no, nah, I'm just saying it just hit him hard though. No, like that, no, that Father bro. Time like just came like he he might have been beating him up a little bit, but he just kind of put the foot on the neck and just like uh, stomped him out. X like. was looking kind of bad, man. X was looking bad since Lee's 2010. Mm. Yeah, Lee's. Um, he was at the Gilmore Correction Institution in West Virginia, and apparently he was in there for hiding millions of dollars from the IRS. IRS is the only people I'm scared of because they even come get you after death. Uh. Um, but he got a chance to stop at a um, gas station not too far from, well, far from here, but in our area at Fredericks, uh, Maryland. And he was taking photos with people at the gas station. People were asking him to take photos, and he took them. Yeah. So, you know, shout out to X. And, you know, this is probably the biggest time I've seen people happy to see X come out of jail. Because I think this one is not something like a crime. Like he robbed somebody or he stole someone's car. He ain't smacked nobody. Right, right, right. So people are happy no for X run. to come home because <laughs> I guess that goes to show you, no matter how much money you have, everybody understands the tax situation. Mm -hmm. Everybody understand that Uncle Sam can, 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 can catch anybody when it comes to that. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm definitely understanding of that, though. So shout out to X. You know, you think... um. With him getting this light shining on him, coming out of jail and going viral, no. you think? What you, what you thought I was about to ask? Can he drop a record and be relevant or something? Yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> no. I think I think he has loyalists. X definitely has loyalists though. Nah, eh, why not? People want to hear him. People want to hear him. I still think people want to hear X. Nobody, Maybe not nobody, the level that he was. Nobody want to hear hear X, a new X record. We we just want to. Hopefully he got a good deal and he owns some of his royalties. I'll say this, though. X has the kind of personality that X does need, like, a, another reality show or maybe he needs to host he a game go that show. Route. He can go that route. Or he can host a game show or something. Like, we need X personality. Like, he has a great person. Because people still watch him single Jingle Hell Bells. Bitch. Right. <laughs> or, or they still watch him, that verse of him um, singing Rudolph. Yeah. I mean, look how much, I mean, that's been going on for like five years. Yeah, I can do that. I can I can see that. I can see the TV thing, TVX. Yeah. X on the Tizu. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully this situation, he could take advantage of it, man. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, Before we get up out of here, shout out to all my Game of Thrones lovers. I didn't get a chance to shout this out last week. 
they announced that the final season will be premiering April 14th. I really can't wait for that. And I finished watching, to everybody, I was I didn't really get a chance to tweet this past week, but finished watching the season two of The Punisher. Uh, I didn't watch it. I need, to, I need to go ahead and watch that. It was good. It was good. I mean, I definitely think that they're going to take it away because they've been canceling all the Marvel shows on Netflix anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, because I guess allegedly... It's been so many stories. One of the most consistent stories is is that Marvel's going to pull all of their um, shows to have their own streaming service, their own streaming service, which would be smart because uh, DC has their own streaming service, and it's amazing. So I don't see why Marvel, you know, would not want to do that, you know, have all their platforms on there. Um, but The Punisher was good. It was good. I mean, to be honest with you, it was actually brutal. And, man, boy, make sure you watching that with no kids around because uh. people – like, if a person gets shot in the eye, you see the eyeball come out and everything. The bullet go in the back of the head, all that good stuff, man. Eesh. So, yeah, it's, it's brutal. I mean, it is. And it starts off brutal. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good show, man. And so, I, you know, I, I ended it, man. So, that's about it, man. Anything else, man, we miss? Uh, no, man. I think that's about it. I think we pretty much covered everything. What you got going on for the rest of the week, bro? What? Keeping these records spinning, spending time with the family. Um, big shout out to everybody who's watching us on our YouTube page. We got a couple really big bursts these last couple episodes, and we appreciate you guys checking us out on Spotify also. Um, shout out to the people on Audio, on Audio Mac. You know, you guys have been showing us some love. We're going to have some video coming soon, so you get a chance to see us. That means act we can't be in here just wearing whatever no more. So uh, we're going to have that coming <laughs> real soon. Um, as usual, make sure you hit us up on our Twitter, at WHMS98. Follow me on my Twitter, at Radio. This gentleman right here, at DJ Academics. Check us out on all social media platforms, SoundCloud, Podomatic. Type in and search engine, Hip Hop Make the Show, one word. As usual, be blessed and successful, and we'll talk to you soon. We ghost! It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show!